Hi, everyone. I'm Jerry Marcello, and welcome to the City Center Podcast from West Palm Beach. Summer is here, and it's just about time for South Florida's largest free outdoor Independence Day celebration. We're talking about Fourth on Flagler, where fun, food, and fireworks all happen on the city's waterfront. We'll talk about what's in store and how you can get the most out of this year's celebration. Joining me today is Mary Pinnock, Marketing and Community Events Manager for the City of West Palm Beach. Mary, welcome. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks for having me. Now, I understand this is the 36th year for Fourth on Flagler. Uh, it wasn't as big in its early days, or was it? No. At some points, it was actually longer. It was. And then now we're to the point we're at for the last, oh, I'd say since 1995. So back when it started, it was kind of like it was today, actually, from 6 yeah. to 10 p.m. And there was a period of time in the 90s where we went actually from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Wow. And it's pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> it is 4th of July, it after all, right? It is 4th of right? July. And we would see our crowds mostly between 6 and 10 p.m. So, you know, at one point we got, we decided to work smarter. Okay. And Not um, harder. In, not hotter. Uh, not hotter, exactly, <laughs> and have the event when, you know, the majority of the folks could come out, so. Sure enough. So, um, obviously, it's a celebration of the of the Independence Day of our grand country. Uh, what is it that makes it so special and such an, a popular event here in South Florida? You know, well, like all of our events, it's a free event, and I think the beauty of our events is it really, when you say the word community, that word unity is right in it, which of so much importance for this day in particular, right? right Independence right. Day. Yeah. And we really do bring together all of the community. You see all ages, all demographics. And, you know, for one day, we're all out there to celebrate the same thing. And that is our independence and honor those that have provided that for us. Well said. Well said. So what can folks coming out uh, expect to see? So it's just a great day. We hope everybody comes out. It's best to get a little early, get here a little early for, you know, the better parking spots, right? Mm -hmm. um, we have three stages of entertainment. So there's something going on from the minute, you know, right at six o'clock, there's a lot going on. Uh, the New Day USA stage is the main stage. Mm -hmm. We have a great uh, Zach Brown tribute band. Nice. On that stage, which is he, very patriotic music, of course, that he sings. And um, then we have the Informa Market stage, which is in Coos Park, has a, a really fun dance party band called Mischief. And then the super, the Palm Beach County Supervisor of Election stage, which <laughs> is, no, that was a mouthful, yeah. is uh, in the Meyer Amphitheater, and it's part of the BNT impact windows and doors kids area <laughs> so we have the whole community involved so there's music for pretty much anybody who wants to come by totally totally fantastic yeah okay so we've got music we got is tell us is there food available is there places to eat sure there's going to be plenty of food vendors throughout the site food and beverages because of course, we want to celebrate with those great, right. <laughs> it's all part of Fourth of July, right? Right, right, right. Um, We have the kids area, like I mentioned, and it's always, it, the Meyer is the perfect spot for that because it's kind of its own area. It's super easy for the parents to watch the kids sure. in there. So we have all kinds of inflatables and um, giant games as we have had in the past. Plus, we have our Parks and Rec crew out there with their kids uh, Independence Day crafts and other games that they're doing. Um, so that's a super fun area that the, the parents have really enjoyed to bring the kids to. And then... Um, well, see, that's really nice because, you know, there are other events that take place which are more uh, tuned to, to older adults or younger adults, not so much to kids. This is really a family event. That's totally. This has been... Fourth on Flagler has been a family of event since its inception. Right. And that's who you should be with on mm, 4th of July, yeah. right? Right. And right. Um, we definitely see a lot of families. Of course, they're all coming out for the culminating right. experience. And that being the military honor ceremony that we do right before the fireworks, about a quarter to nine. And then, of course, it is Tell 4th of July. Elaborate a little bit more fireworks. about that. What, what, what actually goes down, goes down during that? 
the military yeah. honor ceremony. Right. So we do that right before the fireworks, and this year we'll be honoring all branches as we have in the past, all branches of the military. We'll have representatives from each branch of the service. We're working with the local West Palm Beach Elks Lodge, who will be helping us with the, the production by providing those uh, veterans for us. And then um, we do a flag lowering. Um, we're going to lower the flag to a live performance of the Star Spangled Banner, mm. which is, it's always a very special a moment. Very moving, no doubt. It is, it is. And then we go right into the highlight the finale of the evening, pretty much, which is the fireworks. Now, you mentioned flags earlier. Tell us a little bit about the, the program we have going on right now, the Respect the Flag Partnership. Sure. So, again, with the West Palm Beach Elks Lodge, uh, West Palm 1352, we decided to get with them. They have a very patriotic mission, and um, it involves respecting the flag. So we thought it would be a great journey with them this year to partner to educate the public on how to respect the flag, take care of the flag, display the flag, and then how to uh, retire those flags that are, you know, a little torn and tattered because there is a very much a proper way to do it. Hmm. So we are going to collect those types of flags that are ready for retirement at all of the West Palm Beach Fire Department, uh, the fire stations throughout the summer as well as at the Elks Lodge with a little bit of limited time frame um, daily at the Elks Lodge. And then at the end of the summer, they will take care of retiring those flags properly for us. So basically, if you want to drop off a flag that is in need of retirement, you can take it to any of the fire stations throughout the summer. There's going to be a box right outside the front mm -hmm. door. You can't miss it. Put the flag in there, and we'll take care of uh, the patriotic duty of properly retiring the flag. It's a great program because I know there's a lot of folks who just break out their flag and they put it in their little holder in the front door, but they are, they're missing the actual protocol that's involved, and it's a very discreet set of procedures for handling a flag. It, it is. Um, I did quite a bit of reading on the flag code recently, and it, it, as it should be, there are very uh, particular requirements. There's quite a history with it, actually. It's really actually really helpful to know that there is a, a a way to take care of a flag that's already done its service. It's been out in, you know, various inclement weather. We've had, you know, how many times have you seen a flag that's a that's been pretty threadbare and it right. needs to be retired? And so it's great to know that there's a way to get this done properly. Right, right. Because we really think it's important, but we also think it's best for you to leave the disposal of the flag to people that know how to do it. Okay, so again, if, if I'm interested in, in taking part in this program, what do I need to do? So basically, if you have a flag that's ready to be retired, right. as you said, torn, tattered, etc., um, all you need to do is go to any of the West Palm Beach fire stations now through the end of August, bring the flag, and they'll, there's a box right at the front door. Mm -hmm. Can't miss it, and just put it in the box. It's that simple. Fantastic. And then that's that's a, a great thing. How many times have we had folks who just didn't know what to do with their flag and, and, not, and unintentionally doing something that's disrespectful? So exactly. that's, that's great. So anyway, so we've gotten to a point now that we're looking forward to fourth on Flagler. It's going to be a wonderful celebration. We want people to come on down. Let's do this trick that we often play. What is the like the top pro tool tips? for, you know, folks coming out and really enjoying their the event. Absolutely. And before I get into that, yeah. let me just say, if you can't come out on that day, because we have, you know, people in our community that aren't able, perhaps, to come out, WPBF TV 25 has a special that's going to run from 9 to 9.30, and it's all about the fourth on Flagler. And part of that is the live showing of our Pyrotechnico fireworks. Nice. So I will just say... We want you to come out, but if there's a reason that you can't, there's one tip. Number two, and I mentioned it earlier, is get here early. 
you know, I'm not saying 12 o'clock. It's like we've already discussed it's pretty hot. Not that but early, right. Get out here a little before 6. And then the parking, which, of course, is all on our website, the different parking locations, mm -hmm. the parking will be easier for you. So it's a big night. We do get a lot of people down here. Do folks want to bring water or bring their own stuff, or is that something that we discourage? We have everything that you need down here, but we do discourage any big backpacks, coolers, Anything ignitable, believe it or not, we actually one year had a gentleman wheeling a big um, grill. Oh. <laughs> and we said, you can't, you can't, yeah, I can't do that. we can't be having you start fires here on site, you know. Yeah. So, um, but you can bring like chairs. Can you bring, yeah, like, you can chairs? bring chairs. We encourage you to bring chairs or blankets because nice. you want to be able to, you know, set up your little, your little fireworks campsite so you can see, see the fire. And that does happen too. If you get here early, the berms are really popular. Shady berms are really popular spots for families to set their blankets up and get ready for the, the fireworks. So that's another reason to come early. And also, we all know to bring them wear our sunscreen mm -hmm. because even though it's getting you know into the evening hours, you, you absolutely don't uh, want to. So say if you're coming out of an area, you're outside of West Palm, say you're coming up from, from South County. Is there, um, is it just best to go up I-95 or can you take a train? What's the best way to come into town? Well, of course, a lot of people do drive and 95 is usually the uh, route that they take. I would suggest, yes, Okeechobee, but Palm Beach Lakes is also to mm -hmm. try to come in from different, different routes. Uh, Brightline. Yeah. I'm sure that that's a possibility and Tri-Rail. That's also a possibility. Fantastic. So, yeah. All right. So we've covered what's going to be going on all the really cool music that's going mm -hmm. to be there. It's going to be a family event, which is really spectacular. We want everybody to take advantage of it. What have we not covered in our little discussion about Fourth and Flagler? So if you happen to be a runner or in training to run right now, mm -hmm. as many people do enjoy this longer hours at night and then get a cool run in, the Bill Bone 5K is back starts at seven o'clock and it starts down by the Informa stage which is at Post Park and it'll go south in that beautiful route that so many people like to run along Flagler yeah, Drive. So and spectacular. The intercoastal yeah. I mean you know the breeze is yeah. and it's at night so it's you know we're, you're not trying to run in the heat of the day. Uh, we encourage you to sign up for that. There's a link on our website for that too. Um, I think it's the fourth year. Mm -hmm. Might be the fifth. It's been a, a a really nice partnership with the Bill Bone 5K too. It's, it's tremendously popular. Yeah. So it's fantastic. So again, if we got folks who are interested in finding out more about the event and actually just even learning about all the wonderful things that you guys are doing all summer long for here at the city, uh, they can find that information by going to the website, right? Yeah, that's. I mean, everything's there. WPB.org forward slash events. Link right to the Fourth on Flagler information right there. Our social media accounts, you can definitely, we encourage you to follow those because they'll be up to the minute with anything that might be happening. It's obviously the easiest way for us to push information out. Fantastic. Mary, thank you again for coming on by and telling us about this event. It's something that happens every year. It is the sort of the, the, the apex of the summer for, for the city and it's a very well attended and we hope everybody comes out and takes part. Yep. Thanks, so, Jerry. And thank you for listening to today's discussion. If you've enjoyed the show, please take a moment to subscribe so that you can see more content. The City Center Podcast is produced by the City of West Palm Beach Communications Department. I'm Jerry Marcello and we'll see you next time. <laughs>